Motion tracking is now available inside VideoLeap. This is one feature that might inspire me to upgrade to a pro subscription. Let's watch this entire video and I'll tell you why you might want to upgrade to a pro subscription as well. This is a longer video so you can use the time codes available in the description to move to the part of the tutorial that you want to see. Follow any person or object in your video with our endless variety of stickers, text, GIFs, and images. First, I'll show you how to use motion tracking with keyframes. This is the traditional way that we used to have to do it before this feature was added. I'll add a text layer and make sure it covers the entire video and then scrub back to the beginning. Double tap the text to edit it. Instead of adding some text, I'm going to tap on the globe on my keyboard and choose my emoji keyboard. Here I can choose any emoji that I want to. I'll choose a smiley face. Once I tap on it to select it, the text on screen will be replaced with my emoji at its usual size, like this. The next thing I need to do is increase the size of the emoji so that it covers the face you see in this video. I'll take two fingers, place them on screen, and spread them apart until the emoji is the size I need it to be. It needs to be pretty big. Now I'll tap the play button to play the video. Notice that the emoji covers the face pretty good except for at the end of the video. I need to use keyframes. I'll scrub back to the beginning of the video and expand the text layer by tapping on the balloon thumbnail so it looks like this. I'll place a keyframe at the beginning of the video because this is the start position. Then I'll manually scrub ahead and watch the video as I do so to make sure that the face does not become visible. You can manually add a keyframe using the keyframe marker. Once you do, a pink diamond will appear at the location of the playhead. I'll continue manually scrubbing forward and watch for any point where the face becomes visible. Here at the end you can see I need to make some adjustments and I'll move the emoji to cover the face. When I do, a keyframe will be automatically added to the text layer at the location of the playhead. To collapse the text layer, just tap anywhere on screen like this. To expand it once more, tap on the balloon thumbnail and you can see that the keyframes I previously added are still there. To remove a keyframe, just select it so that it turns pink and tap the keyframe marker once more. That keyframe will be removed. And of course, to add a keyframe, tap on the keyframe marker at the location of the playhead. The problem with using keyframes to do motion tracking is that I often have to play the video clip several times and watch carefully to make sure that the object I'm using to hide my face or whatever other object I want to hide properly covers the face. You'll notice as the playhead passes over each keyframe, that keyframe is highlighted and the position of the emoji is automatically corrected once the playhead passes over a keyframe. Now I'm going to add another clip and I'll do the same thing with that clip using VideoLeap's built-in motion tracking feature. The main reason you might want to upgrade to a pro level subscription is to remove the limitations within VideoLeap. Add a text layer. I'll double tap to edit the text and add my emoji like this. Of course, I'll need to resize the emoji so that it covers the face that I want to hide. And I'll move it into position like this. The motion tracking tool does not require the use of keyframes. I'll tap on the check mark to dismiss the emoji keyboard, move the emoji over to the side of my face, and let's use the motion tracking tool now. With the text layer highlighted, you'll see a new icon labeled tracking. Tap on it. When you do, you'll see this pink widget appear on screen. Place the widget over top of the object that you want to track. 
Tap the Start Tracking button and wait patiently. The video will take a few seconds to process. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. I'm a cute little bunny. Love you. I got a new iPhone. <laughs> now all I need to do is move the emoji back into position over top of my face. And then I'll play the clip once more. Notice that the face will be completely covered. You may have to do this one or two times just to get it right. But for the purposes of this tutorial, this is fine. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. I'm a cute little bunny. Love you. I got a new iPhone. <laughs> if you're not happy with the results of your tracking, just tap on the reset button. Now I can export my video, choose a resolution, and tap on export. In order to work properly, there must be some separation between the face and the emoji. That's why I placed the emoji beside the face in order to use the tracking tool, and then covered the face once the tracking was done. Here's the result. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. I'm a cute little bunny. Love you. I got a new iPhone. <laughs> I'm going to add another clip to show you an example using text. As I previously stated, in order to work properly, the tracking tool needs some separation between the text I want to track and the object that the text is following. I'm going to add some text to follow the glass sitting on the table. If you are a YouTube content creator and going to be filming footage in public places, you need to be aware of background music because when you upload that footage to YouTube, you may get a copyright claim or even a copyright strike because of the background music playing in the restaurants. For that reason, I've removed the audio from this clip. I'll tap on text to add a text layer. You can use keyboard shortcuts to add text even in video editing apps, like I'm going to do here. I'll double tap the text. Watch what happens when I type this shortcut and press the spacebar. My text will automatically be added. Next, I'll resize and reposition the text where I want it. Tap on the check mark to dismiss the keyboard and continue using the tracking tool. Tap the tracking icon. Before you tap on Start Tracking, place the tracking widget over top of the object you want the text to follow, like this. Make sure the cross is in the center of the object. Then tap on Start Tracking and wait patiently, just like before. Once the tracking is finished, the video will automatically play, and of course if you've filmed your video in a public place, make sure to remove or unlink any audio that has background music if you're planning to upload this video to YouTube. To unlink audio, select your clip, tap on audio, and then you'll see an unlink option. Tap unlink, and then long press on the balloon thumbnail and drag the audio into the trash can to delete it. This clip now has no audio, and once the tracking is completed, I can freely upload it to YouTube with no copyright claims or restrictions of any kind. Keep your eye on the glass on the table and the text I added to the bottom of the screen as the video plays. When Monique picks up the glass, you should see the text move. I've left the text layer selected for demonstration purposes, but when the text layer is deselected, the text will not be surrounded by the pink box. If Monique were to set the glass down, the text would move back down to its original position. If you're not happy with the tracking, you could tap the reset button to export your video. Tap the export icon in the upper right hand corner, choose a resolution, and then tap on save. Once the export is finished, you'll find the completed video inside your camera roll. It should be the last thing you recorded. I upgrade to pro level subscriptions of most editing apps if doing so 
will make my videos look more professional or save me some time. Is the motion tracking feature enough of an advantage for you to upgrade to a pro level subscription of Video Leap? Let me know in the comments below.